beautiful province of New Brunswick we call home. Bon sang pour le bien commun, pour un, and be. Common sense for the common good for one New Brunswick. Thank you. Merci. But first, I believe Jake deserves another round of applause. Also, feel free to grab some coffee and cupcakes on your way out. Oh, sorry. I can't wait for this Migos from. This is going to be good. Huh? What do you think? Is this a People Alliance or is this a PC? Uh, Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Huh? For once, you're going to keep your mouth shut? No, this is Jake's show, not mine. I don't know, but uh, he's a language commissioner. Do you think we should get rid of her? Hey, hey, as an Acadian, now you say get rid of her. Uh, this is one media scrum that's going to be good. Uh, I can't wait for that one. Especially that one there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be really good. I'm going to take the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> like that before? But like all of a sudden? Every speech is different. Huh? I'm a young guy, so I've heard You're young, you're a rookie. Huh? It's gonna be good on uh, on Rogers tonight. Uh. <laughs> no comments, no. This should be good. Well his supporters. Never. I thought this was a People Alliance uh, party. That's what I thought. My God. The language commissioner has got to go. I will agree with that. As an Acadian. I don't know.
Because when you said something about bilingualism, you were in trouble. <laughs> was I ever? That was it, and this is now. You better believe it. Thank you for thinking of radio. The language commissioner, you think they should get rid of <laughs> I am absolutely right from day one. Right? Why is that? Because I think he's going to make do a hell of a job, and he's a good leader, and he's a good, honest kid. And he's got ambition, and I when I saw him in the legislature work on There's a lot of choice. He's the sixth candidate in, so how does he stand apart? Well, I don't, well the way he stands apart, he's, he's, he's got a firm grasp on what, what we uh, need in New Brunswick. I mean, listen to his speech. He touched on just about everything that, uh, that, that needs to be done in this province. He doesn't hold back. You know? Really, uh, tossed out of the Progressive Conservative Caucus uh, over some uh, comments about language. Are you hearing the same thing from Jake? Is this in tune with what you originally said? Yes, I think I think so. You know, I've, I've been critical of uh, that two-tier system, and uh, it just has to stop. It's not fair, and it's not good for the province. I mean, because of that, you know, like Jake said, we're losing. Do you think the language commissioner should be shown the door? Oh my goodness, absolutely. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, no, Jake will do a good job. Yeah, you know, there's, you know, the other thing too is, like you said, we've got six people that are running for the party leadership. And that goes very well, not just for the party, but for the province. That there's enough really good guys that have enough interest to the wind behind me. You have to go with, my, with mom. Where's mom? Hi. The wolves You're are coming. Home where mom takes you, but I would say back to school. I think this is going to be the I'm best media scrum we've ever seen in our life. Yeah. This is going to be good. Let's go over here. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be quite a scrum. Debbie? Ah, uh, uh, the river, uh, yes. where David Albert was. <laughs> yeah. Girls, I thought you were going to be thrown in today. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, really. I almost said, vive les Acadiens, oh, I would yeah, have been shot. Too. That's the only thing that saved you. Yeah, and I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> now, this is going to be one of the best crumb we've ever seen in our life. Mm. A PC member talk about bilingualism. Okay, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Jake, um, yeah? it was last July you first mentioned considering this uh, yep. it's been almost a year now what was the ultimate deciding factor the ultimate deciding factor is I I was waiting for someone to come along that would tackle the tough the biggest issues and I just I just didn't see I didn't hear anything I mean I seen some announcements I attended a few I just didn't hear where they were actually going to get into the real the real tough decisions that have to be made in New Brunswick that coupled with the fact that I think now is the right time to do it personally so that was that was the final decision when you said you need to eliminate duplication tied to language, uh, can you be you know more precise on what that means? Well, basically, I've been. You gotta understand something. The things I put in my speech, it's what I learned from New Brunswickers. I literally went around and got everything from New Brunswickers. We have a lot of redundancy. I mean, we always have to put things in two different languages when we're doing like a press release and stuff like that. But there seems to be a lot of redundancy in it. And we got, we got to do something about that. I mean, you can't just, we can't have a society where 
people get a job and then they're fired four or five years later because they're not bilingual. I mean, they shouldn't have got it in the first place, if that's the case, right? Should we do so, more I mean, does that uh, apply to health, care, uh, health authorities? Do we need one health authority? Uh, no, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. I said I'm just going to get rid of the unnecessary duplication. I think, I think from what I learned from New Brunswick, there seems to be a fair amount of it. I'm going to do a lot more policy on healthcare, though, in, in the in the coming weeks and months. So, give me some more examples of what is unnecessary duplication. Well, some of the unnecessary duplication is, I'll give you an example. You walk into a building, you know, in New Brunswick, you'd expect someone to speak um, two languages to meet you at the door, right? Or use technology to do that. We have too many positions in the province that are coming out bilingual, and and there's too many. Because I live here in, in, in Blackville, and people here tell me they have a very hard time getting a job in the public service. And when you look at the fact that nobody in certain areas even learns French immersion, you can't hold it against your citizen. So we have to have a big tent, right, in New Brunswick? That, those are some of the things I'm talking about. So frontline services Frontline services, front line services I think, should have them. For the most part, absolutely. But it's above that. Like upper management, senior management, uh, some of the real merit-based positions, I don't think you should have to be bilingual to have those now. And extensive bilingual buses as well? Well, the bus issue is in the courts, right? So, I mean, i got to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of that issue. I, I know that uh, both, both um, communities have their both educational institutions. I have no problem with that. The issue New Brunswickers have is when you have a residential street, you know, say we had one right over here, and there's um, uh, French children and English children, they go to church together, they play hockey together, baseball, maybe the school's a mile apart. In that situation, the public is very irritated by that because, I mean, you have to look at the message that's being sent. What message are we sending to the children? You know what I mean? Like, that's my good friend next door, but I, I can't go on his bus, but I can go to church with him and play hockey. It just seems, that's to me, it seems redundant. Then again, if it ends up being a court decision or ruling, I mean, we have to live with it, right? That's, that's how it works. Should we do a better job in this province of educating <clears throat> people in both languages before they graduate to high school? Um, absolutely. And the, the reason why is the public sector in, in New Brunswick is, well, regrettably, but it's one of the, one of the largest employers. The fact that uh, we've never really placed paramount on, on learning those languages. Years ago, I talked about the impracticalities of it in the 1970s and 80s, you know, how it would have been bricks, mortar, extra staff, extra books, you know, so it was seen as too expensive back then. But when you move into the 90s, more and more of these regulations and initiatives call for these like quotas for jobs and I, I think that's going too far. I think that all people in New Brunswick should get opportunity to work in the public service. I don't agree with those language police. I don't I would never agree with that. And no New Brunswicker should and any I've spoken to across New Brunswick doesn't. So I could I could add that. When you, when you talk about the uh, the, the la eliminating the language commissioner, if that role is to report on where the law might not have been followed and, and put out a report or investigate it, what, what, is, what is it about that function that you think is causing a problem? Well, when I pick up the newspaper and I read the front page and the language commissioner files a report based on 19 complaints and uh, 18 of them were from the same person, that's one irritated citizen in the province that could actually be doing such a thing on purpose. We have to get away from that. I mean, as an MLA in this province, I want the front page to be how beautiful this river is and how many tourists are coming this summer. I want to be about the company that actually wants to come here and invest money in New Brunswick. I don't want to pick up the news and read that some 60-year-old veteran guy got kicked out in a parking lot and fired. Like, this is ridiculous. This is not, there's, there's no citizen in the province that could actually relate to that and say, oh, it's great that we have this. There's nobody that could do that. I think that it needs to be respectful. We do need to create har harmony and respect, and you can achieve that when people are becoming more and more divided. I, I hear it every day. I I'm, I'm telling you, what you need to understand is my big policies, I built them with all of New Brunswick. I didn't create anything new. They told me these are the issues. What's the well, difference well, between the policy? Well, oh, sorry. Well, some of the things you're saying are going against the consensus that has existed in both parties, like on language and also yeah. on uh, business subsidies. Mm -hmm. um, how confident are you that you can appeal to the mainstream of the party when you seem to be disagreeing with something that's been pretty kind of basic, accepted uh, conventional wisdom for a long time? Sure, good question. Uh, it's important for me as a leader to not be, my job here is not to 
go around New Brunswick and celebrate the Progressive Conservative Party's decisions for the last 80 years or defend the ones that have not been good decisions. I believe that all legislation is made with good intention, regardless of decade, regardless of premier. And uh, I, I have to, <laughs> my riding is three hours long. I represent English and French. I've always represented First Nations people. I talk to everybody. I'm in every rink, every baseball field. I'm across this province. People want respect in New Brunswick. They, we can't have French and English people getting worked up. Again, that, that doesn't help the province. And the, the Commissioner of Official Languages has divided the public. You know, I know what you're saying. Isn't that a, a good thing that she, there's language audits or whatever? It's not a good thing. And I am different from other leaders. I'm going to stand on my principles. I have distinguished myself from all of them today. And I'm very proud of that because I have to stand on my own principles. What's the we difference are, between are, are the... Are you, are what's the difference? Question, one last question. Sure. Uh, do you think that francophone members of the party will want to support you if they if they find some of the things you're saying to alarm some of the things that they hold dear? I can't speak for anybody else. I can tell you though that I can speak for one of my um, people that spoke today was a woman from Bay Saint Anne. You know, like I'm guys. You have to understand something. I'm in this for the people of New Brunswick, and we have 13 billion dollars debt. And the front story is a woman chasing after veterans, kicking them out into parking lots. Come on, guys. This is not what we need in New Brunswick. What we you, all know it. What's the difference what between the part... What place the Official Languages <laughs> Commission with? What would that agency yeah, be? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking at that now. Um, basically, something that would um, look at cultural harmony, equal opportunity, linguistics, everything. And it could be something for uh, the English, the, uh, the Brayon, the Acadians, First Nations people new immigrants, it could something that would work for all New Brunswickers, because we're one tent in New Brunswick. And if you notice today, I, I didn't have many posters here today. I'm not a poster candidate. This campaign for me is going to be policy driven, and it's going to be talking about the big challenges right here in New Brunswick. What's the difference between your policy and the People Alliance policy? I couldn't say for sure. I don't really follow the People's Alliance. I know they have some policies on it, but uh, what I would say right off the bat is is that mine will be more about respect and harmony. I, I want to do away with the divisive things. That's the part of it that's so unfortunate for the province. So I can't speak for any other parties and I can't speak to who will support me and who will not. What I can speak to today is I've got a strong foundation. We're working on a lot of policies. I've got some good support and I'm really proud to be doing this. On the so economic said, front there, you, you talked about getting rid of the subsidies for large businesses. How do we attract companies to this province if other provinces are offering those subsidies and we aren't? I'll tell you how. I looked at lowering, uh, getting rid of the provincial income tax for small and medium-sized businesses. When you, when, you have, when you put yourself in a situation where small businesses can thrive and you put yourself in a situation where New Brunswick is the place to come rather than a place that, uh, you know, just, just in the, I get a lot of emails from different investment groups, you know, based on the two portfolios I have. New Brunswick has never been seen as such a toxic environment, business-wise, in the last couple of years. And we have to change that. And I, I think what I'm trying to say is, imagine being in Georgia or New York or Ireland or anywhere around the world and you're looking at moving to North America. You're looking at the high income taxes, so you're a doctor. Are you going to want to come here? If you're a small business that can hardly survive where you are, but you look to New Brunswick and we've got high taxes on small business, would you come here? Would you come here when the top story every day is that the two biggest um, groups in our provinces that have two different languages are being divided by one person you know, on a witch hunt in New Brunswick? You cannot expect to attract outside investment that way. So I think some of what has been taking center stage here in New Brunswick has given a negative outlook to the rest of the North America and the global world, and I want to change that. And that, that's my goal as, as leader. How is your French, and can uh, a premier of the province be, does, does the next premier have to be fluently bilingual? Can he speak the Shiak? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm learning French. I've got a teacher from uh, Bay St. Anne, former principal. Uh, she's a, she would be a Durrell. I think she's related to Yvonne Durrell, actually, I think a cousin or something. Anyhow, I'm learning French. I've been learning it for a while. I'm not bilingual now. And, uh, you know, I, I have a, a personal goal that 
I might be bilingual like in a couple of years, but I just don't know how long that process will take, you know. But uh, as far as whether the Premier needs to be bilingual, that is not something that can be decided by me. That, that has to be decided by the people of New Brunswick. Jake, by setting yourself apart on the language issue, are you hoping to drive the debate within the, within the party during the, during the leadership campaign? Well, I, I'm, I just, I believe in it, right? I, I believe in what you heard today. I wrote that speech myself, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I believe that the, being officially bilingual in its infancy, in its origin, origin was, was a good thing. You know, equal opportunity, I talked about it. These, these were good initiatives. And I plan to build on those ones, and I think it's become something altogether together different. So my, my answer to your question, the people in the party are only going to debate this issue if, if, if you guys go and ask them about it. And of course, if I'm in a debate with them, but I think it's a huge issue, absolutely. Where do you stand on abortion, and would you bring back the two doctors? Um, personally speaking, I've always leaned more on the pro-life side, but um, <clears throat> it's a woman's choice. I have no, no interest in dredging up the, you know, I have no interest in it. It's not on my agenda. Should we increase abortion, uh, abortion access? What I would say is if, if I were Premier of New Brunswick and opposition parties brought forth bills, um, I would allow my caucus to vote whichever way they wanted on any of that. I think when it's a matter of, of true conscience for an MLA, the party whip system is a little rigid when, when you look at that. I think our system can work, but as leader I would allow some free votes on on really deep-seated conscience issues. And what's your position on that? What's your leadership, just personally? Do you believe there should be more access to abortion? I haven't heard any complaints that there wasn't enough access lately. Have you guys? Depends I'm asking. Who you talk I mean, to, I guess. Who you talk to. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I, I guess, I couldn't answer that. I haven't, uh, I haven't spoken to anyone that's told me it's a problem. Do you want to try a question in French for my colleagues at Radio Canada? I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> How about Shiat? Half English, half French. <laughs> you were played in on Rocky music. Are you in, embracing the underdog role in this uh, six-person race? That's a good question. Okay, in fairness, <clears throat> the movie is uh, a personal favorite. Forgive me. I know, but I love it. Um, a lot of people have characterized me as an underdog, or so I'm told. Personally, I was going to use that song anyway, but I guess it does kind of work together. But um, what I can tell you is, underdog or not, I'm going to be competitive. I'm going to talk about the big issues, and I'm going to take the discussion to where the public wants it to go in every circumstance. Thanks, Jake. Right, thank Thanks, you. guys. Hey, Jake. I really appreciate all of you coming here. I thought it might rain. I thought I might have to put a press release out, and I had the Catholic Hall booked just in case. But uh, anyway, we, we beat the rain. You're Thank covered. you. Hey, Jake. Any excuse to get to Blackwell? Oh, ask me that Absolutely. question. Just don't tape it. Hold on, Charles. Yeah, sure. Which question? Ask me a French question. See if I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to ask it if you're not going to do it on tape. Oh, we got a tape couple, right here. Give me a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many people you think, nobody wants to talk about the language commissioner. That is a faux pas, and you talk about it today. How many people do you think that's going to shake your hand and say, I support you, the MLAs and everything, when you leave here? Charles, I can't speak for anybody else. Um, I, you know, if you want to be the leader of a party and the premier of New Brunswick, you have to have principles. You have to believe in them, and you have to stand on them. And if you should fall on those principles, you have to move on from that. I, I can't tell you who's going to vote for me. I, I don't know yet. You know, I've, this is the first meeting of my team. Yeah, the <laughs> first time. And many of them were here. This is the first time, you know. Are you a little Donald Trump? Uh, the Canadian side of Donald Trump? Oh. I wouldn't say that at all. No. I actually, my campaign is largely driven on ethics, equality, and and mutual respect, harmony. I'm... I probably would be the exact opposite, maybe, of that. As an Acadian, we agree on one thing. Uh, you can repeat after me. Le language commissioner, il faut qu'à se montre la porte. <laughs> yeah, but language gotta... commissioner has to be shown the door. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Cause trouble between French and English. Yep, yeah. and we need to put a different type of uh, um, legislation in, a different type of, we might need another office, but we got to focus on equal opportunity. and and. And I'll tell you something, we, when you focus on that stuff every day, it's, it's too negative. We need all people to be content that they're getting a fair shake in New Brunswick. And that's what I stand on.
And that's why that's why we I talked about the big issues today. Oh, they were big. It was going to be interesting to see how the media is going to cover this and how your fellow MLA is going to take it. I appreciate it. that you came here. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm surprised. And nobody I, hurts you. And I appreciate they haven't <laughs> hang, they haven't hung a frog uh, from a tree in about 125 years here. Well, no, and I came here. No, no, and the video's on. Just want to let, watch what you say. But uh, no, uh, it's good. All good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good luck. Be sir. easy on me. Uh, I'll see you. Oh, on by the, the way, I got to clear. I got to clear up something. The video's on. Just want to let you know. I, I just yeah. Many yeah. times you've asked me if I was taking. Taking my Ritalin. Yeah, I, I always call you the Louisa. There's That's only I two say. things. Calm down. Yeah. Two things I take: marijuana, Ventolin, and marijuana, and Advair. And I'd like to get away from the Advair. You smoke, you smoke marijuana. I'm an asthmatic. You smoke marijuana and never smoke a joint. I don't smoke marijuana. Only, only one politician, uh, want to be politician, say he smoked marijuana. Dominic Carty. All the rest are running like like little rats. They say, "Oh no, I never smoked. What's that? What's that? <laughs> are you smoke marijuana? Yes, I want to know something. Are Do you, you smoke? May I smoke a joint about four weeks ago? <laughs> I should have it for medical use to calm down. So I know we'll leave you off the off right. the record. Okay. See ya. Okay. Hey, Here we go. Like Bill, everything's fine.